Chapter 14. I suppose jumping out in front of a speeding bus in the dark ain't the smartest move in the world, and it did take Lester an uncomfortable amount of time to see me and bring Jaeger to a skidding halt. But he did manage to stop her a full two feet before hitting me, so I don't see why he gave me such grief about it later. Lester cut the engine and ran for the door at the same time that Rodeo whooped and jumped from the roof to the hood and then to the asphalt and then barreled into me squeezing me in a rib-crushing hug that was darn near painful. But I didn't wiggle or fight. I just worked my own arms free so I could wrap them around him and return the favor. We stood there in Jaeger's headlight beams right there in the middle of the highway off-ramp, holding on to each other in the darkness and not letting go. Oh, honey bear, he murmured, kissing me hard on the top of my head. I am so sorry. I'm 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 so... Shut up, I said, then pulled back to look him in the face. It's not your fault, Rodeo. Lester was standing a little off to the side, smiling and shaking his head. You gave us a scare, girl, he said. I'm sorry. Lester wrinkled his brow and looked back and forth between me and Rodeo. We leave you at a gas station and you're apologizing to us? Y'all are a trip. He stepped forward and held his fist out, and I reached out to bump it with my own. Glad you're all right, Lester said quietly, then shook his head again. Can't believe we left without you. I shrugged as best I could with Rodeo's arm still wrapped around me. It was no big deal, but I'm glad you morons caught on so quick. We didn't, Lester said, then pointed at the bus's windshield. It was that cat of yours started going nuts the minute we pulled out, pacing and scratching at the windows and howling. Made a big old fuss. Rodeo kept hollering at you to get your cat under control, and when you kept ignoring him, he went back to check on you. So don't thank us. Thank that noisy feline right there. Ivan was sitting on the dash, pressed against the glass, eyes on me. He opened his mouth in a meow that rang right through the windshield. I pulled loose from Rodeo and stepped forward to tap the window by Ivan's face. He rubbed against the windshield where my fingers were touching it. Thank you, Ivan, I said, and my voice cracked just a little. He was purring so strong I could hear it through the glass. I had already loved that cat with a fierceness, but right then, phew, that Ivan. The first time he ever used his voice, he used it to speak up for me. It's something to have someone who misses you when you're gone, and it's something to have someone who fights to get you back. I turned back toward Rodeo and saw Salvador and his mom behind him standing by their car. Oh, hey, I said, then grabbed Rodeo's hand and dragged him over toward Salvador and his mom. Introductions. Rodeo was still in a bit of an emotional daze, and Salvador's mom was giving Rodeo and Jaeger a look that was doubtful at best but we were still parked in the middle of the road, so I didn't have a lot of time for a warm-up. Salvador, this here's Rodeo. Rodeo, this is Salvador. And this is... I trailed off, hand held out toward Salvador's mom, realizing I probably shouldn't just call her Salvador's mom. Esperanza, his mom offered with a smile. Esperanza Vega. My mouth dropped open. Esperanza, I whispered, like from the book. Esperanza rising. Ms. Vega just kind of smiled and shrugged, but I was blown away. That was one of my favorite books ever, and here she was. It was a sign, for sure. I got goosebumps. I shook my head and got back to the business at hand. And this is Esperanza Vega. She's Salvador's mom. They looked out for me while I was waiting for you. Rodeo held his hand out, and then so did Salvador's mom, and they shook. Miss Vega looked up into Rodeo's eyes, and I saw that magic work and saw her soften up just a bit. Thank you, ma'am, Rodeo said in his bone-deep, genuine way, and Miss Vega smiled and said, my pleasure. And then Rodeo shook Salvador's hand, and they pretty much had the same exchange, and then the idea hit me, and I pulled Salvador off to the side, off into the shadows of the ditch. You should come with us, I said and Salvador opened his mouth to protest, but I beat him to it. It's not help, I said, holding up my hands. I know you don't need it. It's repaying a debt. You saved my butt, and I owe you one. I know you don't want to mess with those cops over there, and it's only a matter of minutes before they come over here snooping around, and no offense, 
but I don't think this car is going to make much of a runway runaway vehicle. Y'all are heading that way, right? I pointed up the highway in the direction Rodeo and Lester had just come roaring back from. Salvador sniffed and nodded. Well, so are we. It just makes sense, man. Once your aunt calls, we can drop you off at the nearest bus station. Come on, it's the least I can do. Please? As Salvador's eyes darted around in thought, I went through it in my own head, too. I couldn't take my eyes off the prize, which was still waiting for me buried under a tree a couple thousand miles away. But having the Vegas on board for a day or two wouldn't interfere with that at all, as far as I could see. It was a win-win, and I'm all for win-wins. Ever since I'd gotten Ivan, I'd been seeing the whole world a little bit differently. He was like that first sip of cold water when you didn't even know you were thirsty. And now I didn't want to stop drinking. I'd made that decision for me. And I'd also made the secret choice to head home. No matter rodeos, no-goes, and hang-ups. I'd spent a long time mostly worried about rodeo and what he wanted. Maybe it was time to start worrying about someone else. I liked Salvador. It'd be fun to have a friend on board. I wanted it. And what I want matters too, right? I nodded to myself. Salvador looked at me, then away up the highway, then over at our bus. Don't you have to, like, ask your dad? Don't worry about that. I'll talk to Rodeo. You talk to your mom. So that was it. Salvador shook his head, but he walked over and pulled his mom to the side and started talking with her while I walked over to Rodeo. Hey, I said, we got room for two more. I didn't ask it, just said it. Two more what? Two more passengers, I said and pointed a thumb at the huddling Vegas. They're going our way and their cars broke down. Rodeo opened his mouth just like Salvador had, but I was on a roll and getting good at not giving other folks a chance to kill my momentum. I know what you're going to say, but save it. We own Rodeo. I was alone and they saved me. From the cops. Rodeo's head jerked back. Wait a minute. What? What did you do? We were gone for like 15 minutes. I waved his words away and shook my head. That's not important right now. What is important is us returning the favor and giving him a lift. It's only right and you know it. I blew out a breath. Okay, now go ahead and say whatever you were going to say. Rodeo took a step closer to me. A little smile played at his lips. What I was going to say, sugar bug, is that after this whole shebang, I'd do just about anything you ask me to. Then he smiled wide and I smiled right back. Of course they can hop in if they want to. They brought my honey bird back to me. They could have the whole doggone bus if they wanted. I heard a throat clearing behind me and saw Salvador waiting, his mom standing beside him. We, uh, good? he asked. I looked at Rodeo and he nodded, still smiling. Oh yeah, he said, absolutely. You gonna ask them the questions? I asked. Rodeo shrugged. What the heck? But we should make it quick. He took a step toward Ms. Vega and Salvador and squared up to him. So, lady and gentlemen, we got three questions we asked new travelers. You ready? Uh, I guess, Salvador said. All right, first, what's your favorite book? Serious, Salvador asked. Serious, favorite book. Salvador thought for a second. Well, last year in school, I read Ghost by Jason Reynolds. That one was pretty great, I guess. Yes, I shouted. That book was amazing. Okay, sounds like you passed that one, Rodeo said. How about you, ma'am? Ms. Vega twisted her mouth for a second and thought and then answered, La Muerta de Artemo Cruz, and then added, By Carlos Fuentes. Fuentes, Rodeo nodded. Nice. Next question. What's your favorite place in the whole world? This time, Ms. Vega answered first. A kitchen cooking with my family, any kitchen, as long as my family is there. Rodeo shook his head and looked down at his feet and then smiled up at Miss Vega. Great answer, great answer. And you, Salvador? Salvador sniffed. I don't know. Rodeo shrugged one shoulder. Give it a shot. We've been lots of places, me and Mama, Salvador said. He looked at his mom who was standing there in the day's end darkness looking back at him, and his face softened. I saw it. It's funny how sometimes when a face goes gentle, it ends up looking stronger somehow. 
There was powerful love there between Salvador and his mom, a love that spoke for itself. He looked back at Rodeo and shrugged. I guess my favorite place is just wherever she is. Rodeo nodded, a slow nod. He looked at Salvador in the eye, then looked at me, then looked at back at Salvador. He held out his hand and Salvador took it and they shook. No more questions, Rodeo said. This ride's yours if you want it. We owe you. What was the last question? Salvador asked, cocking his head. What's your favorite sandwich? Salvador snorted. For reals? Aren't you going to, like, ask if we're criminals or something? Rodeo laughed. You never asked if we were criminals, he said. True, but I kind of wanted to. Rodeo guffawed at that. Fair enough, man. Well, we're not criminals, and I get the feeling you ain't either. And that's good enough for me if it's good enough for you. You need a hand with your suitcases and stuff? Sure. As we all walked over to the Vegas' car and started grabbing their stuff, Rody asked, So, just curious, what is your favorite sandwich? Salvador thought for a second, then asked back, You ever eaten a torta from a taco truck? Oh, brother, are you kidding me? Rodeo slapped Salvador on the shoulder. You and me are going to get along just fine, man. Their stuff was loaded and Lester fired Jaeger back up and we were ready to roll when all of a sudden Salvador jumped up and shouted, Wait! and flew out the door. He crouched down for a minute by their dusty old car and when he climbed back up the steps, he was holding a dented hubcap in his hands. He looked around at us, sitting there staring at him. Wanted something to remember her by is all he said. I looked at Rodeo and he was looking at Salvador and he had a wide open expression on his face. And then he looked at me and I looked away quick. But I tell you, I really dug Salvador at that moment. That kid already had some things figured out. And that, right there, is how Salvador and Esperanza Vega joined our adventure.